I smell worse than I've ever smelled before. Body odor mixed with burnt plastic. You're getting plastic out. Awesome. That is awesome. Right, so you've agreed that this will go up on YouTube and a thousand people might see it? That's fine. <laughs> all right. It's cool. I really appreciate that. And then yeah, not a problem at, all. at any point, um, I can take it down or do some editing or something. But the idea is I don't do any editing. I just put it up as is. Okay. Yep. Not a problem at all. All right. Good. So let me go to the file. Um, okay. So last time I saw you, so it was about six weeks ago. Um, let's see, left ear problem drifts down to the heart. And I got to catch up on my notes here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, my left ear in my neck and then also like deep in my nasal cavity, all on the left side is, yeah. you know, has been rough for a while. And then whenever I'm getting inflamed, my swallowing on the left side of my neck, it's really rough. It's like hard to swallow and it goes really slow. And I was feeling chest pain as well. And it was like you were saying it was coming from here down to the end of the chest. Yep. Yeah. And, and whenever I get inflamed, I, I feel it. Like sometimes I lose sensation on the left side of my eye and my cheek. It's always on the left side of my head. And okay. I think I told you that our last visit too, is, you know, during allergy season, you know, I was doing good, but my allergies only appeared here. I was like, it was weird. I was only getting a tickle on the left side. It was all the, the right side of my head. There was, I had no allergies. It was weird. Yeah. Okay. So then you were in the office. And I found um, the need for the bioplasma, which is homeopathic cell salts, and then the BCATP to increase mitochondrial function, and then the parasites, and I added CoQ10 for the for your heart, all through muscle testing. So give me an update in the last six weeks. How you doing? Since you started, so you told me. <laughs> Yeah, you told me at our last meeting just to kind of stop eating vegetables. So it was the first time I, I went full carnivore. I haven't had a vegetable since our last meeting. Um, and I've never felt better. <laughs> I, 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 it was, it's, it's strange. I, I, you know, I've, I've never felt like I wanted to get strong before, but for some reason it's like I have this weird energy. Like I want to start working out and put on muscle. It's, it's interesting. This, this has never happened in my whole life. Yeah. Um, after my mold exposure, it was, you know, really rough. I, I was having twitching, shaking, fatigue, all that. But, uh, yeah, I think the going just beef, butter, and salt, and I was pretty, pretty strict on just beef, butter, and salt. Um, everything seemed to kind of get, you know, a little bit better, but I can still tell there's something in here that is, I, I need to address, you know, uh, the symptoms have gone down. But whatever it is that's stuck in the left side of my head, it's uh, it's stubborn. So on a scale of zero to hundred percent, how much better is that since what six weeks ago or whatever? I'd say it's about twenty five to thirty percent better. But just the fact that I, I know it's still there, you know, I, I still, you know. And sometimes, you know, I, I, it's weird because it feels like sometimes it's just there's something in there that's angry. It just gets mad. And it's, I sometimes feel it like moving around. So I don't know. I know you said after the muscle testing, it was like trematodes or something along that line. But So the idea is uh, if you just kept doing everything that you're doing, then theoretically you would be another 25% better in six more weeks. You know, three months after that, you'd be 100% better. Um, it's hard to predict that, but there's two rules when you're getting better. Number one, don't change anything. Number two, if you do tweak, if you do change something, you just tweak it a little bit. So you just have to keep tackling that with what you're doing. And then I'm having you do stuff topically, right? So I, I had the WO oil and then just pair of three. Okay. And you're doing three, I'm still putting a drop in my ear and then my right. mastoid bone as well. Okay, good. And then remind me, did you get a cavitat or cone beam to look for an infection? I did not yet. No, I'm kind of okay. just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that at some point, but just want to make sure I can afford it. And, right. you know, it's not, not too cheap. So that, that is 
part of the plan though. You know, and I did have a question regarding my supplement regimen you put me on. Well, hang on. Hang so, on. Hang on, hang right, on. Sure. So what the, did you have uh, molars, ex, uh, wisdom teeth extracted or root canal there? Yeah, I, I had all four wisdom teeth extracted back in college and it was one of the most painful experiences of my life. I got dry sockets and all, all four, so it was rough. Okay, so you might have an infection there causing that sensation or not. So we'll, okay. we'll find out. Okay, what was your question then? So, I, you know, I was on the, the bioplasma, the CT zyme, CoQ10, BCATP, and all the para supplements and Spanish black radish. So, you know, things are working. I think the one thing that's been difficult for me is because I work in on the road is my, my regimen is pretty frequent. You know, I have right when I wake up, breakfast, before lunch, at lunch, after lunch, before dinner, at dinner, you know, and then bedtime. And it, it's... It, it was all working out well. It's just kind of, I feel like it's gonna be difficult to stay on that long-term just based on, you know, me being always driving around and out on the road. Is there any way to kind of consolidate or bring that to maybe, you know, not five different, you know, times per day, but, you know, like a breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the pair of one I'm good right when I wake up and right before bed, but yeah. it's it's been getting kind of rough. Yeah, so I'll make <clears throat> CoQ10, breakfast, dinner, and the pair, okay. pair of two, or what, no, pair of four, and the pair other four. one, CT zyme. So they're all going to be breakfast, dinner. And then you got the, the pair of one, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. So that makes it simple. Yeah, that one's easy. <laughs> okay, good. And then sh should I bring pair of two back into this? Because I felt like when I did pair of two, and, you know, I, I think I told you last time I had eliminated a really big parasite, you know, and I think it was the parrot too, because I was in a lot of pain. I felt it was moving around. And ever since that went away, it's been feeling better. Sh should I bring parrot two back in? Cause it felt to have such a good impact or when you did the muscle testing, was it not really necessary anymore? Yeah. When I did the muscle testing, it wasn't necessary, but clinical results always trump the uh, muscle testing. And um, we could consider that tweaking, so we don't really want to change much, but we can tweak something that we know we know worked before. So I'm okay with you trying it, trying it again, and see if it helps you some more. And where would you fit that in? Kind of would be like a rotation with para four, kind of like a oh, with para one at the same time. Okay, one and two at this so before bed and at night uh, and right in the morning. Yeah, um, I think I'd like to have it one in the morning, one at night. Yeah, two was really, I mean, when I first started taking it, it was very painful, but I knew it was working because that's when I eliminated the big parasite. So so do you want two and two or do you want one and one? No, no, I'll start with one again. You know, I'll kind of start with one and see how it, things are moving. Okay, good. Um, when you first came in me back in, with September, so it's been nine months or so. Did you actually have an official diagnosis of the myoclonic, you know, muscle jerking or? So, I, I mean, I went through, you know, back in 2018, I had a very heavy mold exposure in my family and I did. And I was having twitching, shaking. They were testing me for ALS, for Parkinson's. I was going through that whole thing. And that I had fasciculations and muscle twitching all over my body, and they didn't know what it was. So, yeah, they, I mean, my medical record shows, you know, muscle twitching, fasciculations, you know, neuropathic pain, all that. So that's that's been happening for many years. Okay. Um, so that was primarily at night trying to fall asleep. It was. It's not. It's been nonstop for ever since the mold exposure. Okay. I mean, still to this day, I, I, the, the muscle twitching has kind of uh, focused more, mostly in my calves now. It's not all over the place, but it was everywhere. But now I'm noticing it's still in my legs. And as I've been doing the carnivore diet, I've noticed too that I'm starting to get rashes on my legs. So I don't know if it's my calves detoxing, because I know when you did muscle testing, you said it was probably the same, you know, organisms down there as well. But my calves are, you know, there's... There's, I don't know how to address the rash or if that's just a 
detox reaction. Okay, so how would you rate the um, the muscle myoclonic fasciculations, you call it, now compared to a year ago? Is it better or worse or the same? Oh, it's way better. Okay, so it's, it's less, it's much less locations and then less severity too? Yep. Yeah, I, I've noticed it comes back when I uh, when I have more mold exposures or if I go into a building that's doesn't have good air. Like I just got back from a work trip yesterday and the hotel wasn't very good and my muscles were cramping and twitching. And so, I, and that was one question I had for you as well. I'm getting better. It's just when I have, you know, exposures, it, it comes back and then, you know, dies down once I leave. Um, I'm not on a binder. I've been on binders for a long time. You know, after an exposure, would you recommend bringing a, like adding a biotoxin binder or a bentonite clay or a, something like that, you know, after an exposure? Yeah. So since September, you haven't been on biotoxin binder? No, I, I just, I stopped it as a, after our last visit. I was on biotoxin binder since oh, yeah, we started, yeah. but we just, yeah, that's for right. the muscle testing, we decided not to do it. But this is the first time I have not been on one for the past six weeks. Yeah. So take, uh, you can take the biotoxin binder when you're on a trip and you might end up in a moldy hotel when you get back you can take more biotoxin binder but for right now it's not an everyday thing for you okay okay good um uh, for that for the muscle fasciculations on a scale of zero to 100 percent, how much better is that now compared to a year ago um i'd say about 85 to 90. it's okay. just all still in my cap where it was everywhere it's kind of seems like it's just my legs are taking the brunt of it now okay when i figured out lactic acidosis back in 2016 2017 a deep ache in the calf muscles was a common symptom early on for people with dirty blood and hypoxia in the blood so it's when you when people have muscle cramping and whatever other symptoms related to muscles um, the calves are kind of the last thing to get better. So it's a common thing that that is hanging on. And then as you get okay. better, and again, it's going to be years, you know. Um, and I had that, I don't know if I told you this, but I had the mold and there's a, a building I used to go into before the pandemic and it was locked down for a couple of years. When I went back, I and I'd go up the steps, I'd climb up the steps. It was like five stories. And after two years of detoxing, I could jump up those steps. So I was so much lighter. And I realized before it felt like I had glass in my muscles. So the my, the mycotoxins from, from mold, you know, they can sit inside the muscle cells causing symptoms. So your, when, when muscle cells are dying, they tighten up. So a lot of times people take minerals to clean up or to fix up their uh, muscle cramping but usually it's just not enough. And once a diet's clean, then what's remaining is toxicity, especially mycotoxins. So you just have to keep going with the detoxing. Are you taking any kind of mineral? I mean, I know you've tried minerals in the past, right? Yeah, I did the CT minerals that I had. Yeah. I was on that for a while. And, you know, I, I it seemed to be working out well. It was pretty easy. Just put it in the water. So yeah, yeah. And even, I was doing trace minerals years ago as well. Yeah, did the trace minerals help you? I was taking it just like right after a sauna because I, I mean, sauna was kind of part of my regimen and that was just, I didn't really notice a difference. I just knew when I got out of a sauna, I wanted to replenish my minerals. Okay, did the trace minerals help with the cramping though, the myoclonic? Not, that I, not necessarily. Okay. You know, I've been doing so, I've been trying so many different things, you know, for the last five years, trying to understand how to make myself feel better, but the last six weeks going on carnivore, I've noticed that it's been a, a huge difference. Okay, so give me a percentage, zero to 100%, just in the last six weeks, how, how much better do you feel by changing your diet? I mean, from where from where I was, from, from the beginning, like 95%, from like when I was like super ill. But from, you know, six weeks ago to now, now it's like at least a 50% jump. Okay, cool. <laughs> Back yeah, in yeah, August... And you know, I, I do have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was going to say, you know, you know, one question I had is, 
you know, with the diet, it's working out. I, I don't mind it. And I, like you said, I can have eggs from time to time. So I've been, you know, throwing some eggs in there, but it's mostly beef, butter, and salt, sometimes eggs. My one question for you is from a drink standpoint, I've been drinking a lot of water, but I'm having a kind of hard time because I, I would like to have a, you know, how bad would coffee hurt me? A black, you know, organic coffee once in a while or a lemon water? Cause just, I, I'd like to have a little more flavor when, when it comes to my drinks. And if I were to have a coffee, how much does that set, would that set me back? It, it doesn't set you back too much unless, I mean, you got to make sure that it's mold-free coffee. So spend a little bit extra money for that. And then um, San Pellegrino, do you ever drink that water? Yeah, I, I do have Pellegrino from time to time. I noticed the bubbles also kind of upset my stomach. And, you know, and one thing I've noticed with carnivores, I've had almost no gas. <laughs> you know, as, as strange right. as that sounds, it kind of, that, that all disappeared too. Yeah. And then regarding the caffeine of coffee, um, it's debatable as to whether or not it will help or harm or whatever. Just try it and just see how your body does with it. Okay. And what about uh, adding lemon to water? Would that would, does that hurt the whole carnivore or keto thing? And I know we shouldn't be eating fruit, but is lemon, lemon water okay? Or would you say not to do it? No, that's fine. That's good. Okay. Okay. Let's see. And, uh, you know, I did have another question for you, if you don't mind. Um, so I, my whole family was kind of impacted by this toxic mold thing. You know, my daughter being you know, nine or 10 years old now, you know, she's also experiencing symptoms and going a carnivore diet for a kid that's got to be in and out of school is tough, you know? Um, but would you say to stay, like, what do you think about oatmeal in the morning? Is that something you'd stay away from? For your child? Yeah. Um, the thing with kids is that, you know, the younger the child, like infants, toddlers, they're in ketosis so easy. So you and your daughter's how old right now? She's 10. She's 10. And so you just want her to eat more meat, you're saying. And she's not really well, I, I'm just trying to find a, a sustainable diet because she's still asymptomatic that you know, and we're just trying to balance what's the best for a kid where we can't just have, you know, steak every day and beef every yeah. day, especially when she's yeah. going to school. And just is, is oatmeal, you know, an option or is that it's, what, yeah, it's, def it's definitely an option. Um, the more whole grain oatmeal you can get. What's her favorite though? Like she likes salads or vegetables or, or fruit. What's she like? She loves berries. She loves berries. Um, she does have bananas. I know when I first started, we first started this mold, you know, journey. We were told to go on a low amylase diet, so bananas weren't part of it. But she, you know, we're kind of adding that in. You know, she does have eggs, but you know, I, I just didn't know if. Oatmeal was uh, okay from a detox standpoint, from your perspective. Yeah, it's okay. Um, the antifungal, did I ever give you the antifungal diet? Yep, that's what I was on for the first like six months until I okay. did the muscle testing. Okay, good. Um, just read through that with your daughter. And um, I believe that's in the second sheet. That's the like the yellow caution sheet. And so you, when you have it, you can um, experiment with it and be cautious. If there's any bad side effects from eating oatmeal or whatever for her, just stop it and then go through that list okay. again and see if there's some other grains that might she might like, you know. Right. But sticking with like a fresh fruits and vegetables and good quality meats is probably the best course of action. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what do you see, like, what are we going to be changing in my regimen going forward? Okay, so let's see, you got the toenail support for fungus toenail, you got the Para 3, Revitin toothpaste, probiotic, CoQ10, Para 2, adding Para 2 back in, Para 1, Para 4, Spanish black radish, bioplasm, BC, ATP, CT zyme. Um, I would keep it the same. And uh, because you're doing so well, especially with the dietary changes, uh, if we make big changes, we might screw it all up and it might be worse. So just, you know, we made those two tweaks and we'll just keep the rest of the same. Okay. And so in terms of, I, I know I saw one of your videos where, you know, having, you, you can never have a cheat day. You know, if I were to have a cheat day or, you know, do something and kind of get set back, like what does that do to the, 
the body and how hard is it to overcome? Let's say if I have like a, a glass of wine or go out with a friend, like what should I completely stay away from, like abstain from? It's it's how your body reacts to the on, food. On your, on your mold video, you said no cheating, like for a long time. Right, for you. And so that's been now since September, October, November, December, six, seven, nine months. Um, so you can try to start to cheat on some foods and just see, pay attention to how you feel. So I, as an example, um, I had this much red wine and I had a horrible headache from it. So I came into the office, got muscle tested and still some issues in my frontal sinuses. So I'm addressing that with some supplements. And so as you push your diet with, you know, realize how your body suffers from it, avoid those foods. And then as we get through the program, I can, you know, refurbish the function of your digestive system and your sinuses and all that stuff, lymphatic system, so that you, that you have less and less reactions to all these foods. Because, you know, food allergies are caused by parasites and mold and all the toxins that sit inside of our cells. So that's the lesson is you, you can cheat and see what happens and learn your lesson, right? So uh, that, that makes sense. And I, I kind of want to let you know, so we just, you know, I told you we were building a house for to try to have a mold-free life and we just moved in. And uh, the reason I asked the question is I had a, we moved in and my wife and I, we had, a, you know, a few glasses of wine to celebrate. Like we're you know, going to, we're moving on. And the next day I almost couldn't walk and had the worst headache of my life. Um, yeah. And the one thing I noticed I wanted to tell you is I was having pain in my lower back, like just below my kidneys. Like it was, it was awful. It was hard to stand up. So my reactivity to that one cheat night was, was very rough. So that tells you all those areas that are over, overloaded with mold and mycotoxins and they love to ferment. And then you add alcohol and you're fermenting alcohol. So it was a big fermentation party happening in your body. And that's why you felt that way. <laughs> okay. Yes. I mean, it's just interesting that, you know, and it shows up in my lower back, like below my kidneys. I don't know if during the muscle testing, if you notice anything or if there's anything I should do different or just because of that reaction or just stick on the regimen. I would just stick on the regimen and we, okay. you know, the, if we were to um, help you with something regarding that, it would be some, some kind of a kidney support product. But I don't want to go there. I don't really want to okay. add. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Right. And then just, just another opinion I was hoping to get from you is what's your thoughts on, because I've been seeing a lot just on this health journey on like seed oils, like, you know, sunflower, safflower oil, like when you see that in products, are, are those to be avoided at all costs? Like what's, what's your opinion on seed oils? Well, that includes the overused canola oil and corn oil and um soy oil those are all seeds but then some of the more organic food manufacturers they'll put in the sesame seed oil and it's going to be more nutritious and the problem is like the excess amount of omega-6 when you deep when you have deep fried food at a restaurant there's all that omega-6 and the omega-3 stay down here so this becomes a ratio of like 40 or 50 to 1 where it should be more like a three to one or two to one ratio. So if you're eating low carb carnivore like you are now, this can normalize within six months, definitely within a year, and your omega-3-6 ratio is good, then you have some sort of a food with sesame seed oil in it or whatever other thing that you had said. And then you can it'll bump up a little bit and then you can bring it back down with the standard with the carnivore diet. So you know, so it's fine in small quantities. It's just a standard American diet. The seed oils are so high in the diet overall. Okay, yeah, I've just seen in some of the, like the snacks we give to our daughter that look healthy from the shelves. They have, you know, sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil. I don't know, and I don't know how much that would hurt because it looks like packaging makes it look like a healthy snack, and that's just like one ingredient in there. I didn't know if we need to avoid that completely, or if, is it okay once in a while? It's okay once in a while. And I avoid it as much as possible. And um, what else to say about that? The seed oils are the worst kind of oils as far as like the liquids for frying or whatever. And then the uh, fruit oils are better and they're okay. So coconut oil, avocado oil, and olive oil. 
So seed oils are down here. Fruit oils are okay. They're just okay, not awesome. And then you got lard, tallow, butter, and animal fat oils. Those are really, really good. So if you ever end up getting some kind of a snack from a healthy you know, food store for your daughter or whatever, or for your family, then you want to try to go for those fruit oils instead of the seed oils. Okay, perfect. No, I just kind of wanted your opinion on that. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure. What other questions do you have? You know, that's that's pretty much it. I, I mean, besides just still with a pair of three, is there any way to rip whatever's out of my head to just make this go quicker? Because I've been doing the pair of three on there. Are there any other topicals? So I've still been doing. I've been doing the Navage with Para Three. I've been using Citri Drops. I've been, you know, going that whole route. There's the ozonated oils. We have um, a variety of, um, like coconut oil, for example. Some are flavored, some are not. And then you can put that right here on the cheek, or you can put that on the inside, um, on the gum, or inside the the cheek there. But again, we don't really know exactly what we're dealing with. I mean, it's going away. It's getting better. So again, with the ozonated oil, it comes like in a two ounce bottle and just put it there, put it on there topically. Now this, we also have what's called tooth and gum support, which is intended to be um, flavored. It's got some kind of a mint flavor to it. And you can use a toothbrush, rub it on there. You can dip your uh, floss into that oil and then floss with it. And we also have um, ozonated oil pulling olive oil so with that i mean you've heard of oil, oil pulling right yep okay so this is ozonated and the the idea is that it absorb all through the tissues up and down and get in there more so that's something to consider is the ozonated oil pulling i think that'd probably be the best thing for you when i'm talking about the subject of ozonated oils okay I'll perfect put, oh, that sounds like a plan yeah i'll put that in the thing on in your schedule here Oil. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for now. I mean, I just kind of want to keep getting better and it's, it's working. Okay, good. So I wanted to share the story because you said that you yeah carnivore and then now you have this desire to feel stronger, right? It's never happened in my life. I used to be very heavy and always kind of weak and now there's something weird. I just, I feel like I want to start lifting weights. Right. Never happened to me. So, you know, so I've been low carb since 99, keto since 2015, carnivore since August of 2018. And my first day I had 1.25 pounds of ground beef and it was a struggle. And then I, but every day after that, I, I did a really good job. And by the end of five days, and I have my own weight set at my house and the heaviest weights I think it's like the adjustable kind. I think it was like 75, 80 pounds or whatever. And I'm looking at this and in my head, I'm like, I can lift, that. I can chest press that now. And I had that weight set for three, four years. There's no way I could have done it. So I just grab it at the maximum weight, lay down on the bench and I press it like three times. And that was at that moment, I'm like, okay, my new rule is eat as much meat as I possibly can every day. And so that's what happens when you go carnivore. You feel, you feel strong. You want to get stronger. You want to go to the gym. It's awesome. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm feeling. I, I've noticed if I eat chicken, I don't feel that though. You know, because I've, I've been doing chicken butter and salt whenever I'm kind of out of beef, and chicken doesn't do that for me. <laughs> right. So chicken's a man-made meat. So you know, if you go back 200 years, people would shoot passenger pigeons out of the sky, and then those went away. Those are extinct. And now we got these barns filled with birds and they don't fly. So their breast meat doesn't get blood because they're not flapping their wings. That's why chicken meat is white and pig pork meat is white because they're not running around the around the fields like they used to. So it's a man-made, those are man-made meats. So that's okay. why red yeah. meat's better. Yeah. That's why beef is Makes better. Sense. I, I've been staying away from pork as well, just due to the, you know, potential parasites so i just pork has not been part of it at all it's mainly when i don't have beef i'll throw some chicken in there but it, it doesn't really it doesn't satisfy me like having a yeah. you know a beef 
Yeah. Um, actually, last question I had with the rashes that have been presenting on my calves since I've been detoxing. I know it, it, I, I believe it's just a detox reaction. Is there anything else like to maybe make that go away or should I just kind of deal with it? You know, it, it's been consistent. They have not gone away since I've been detoxing. So you got Spanish black radish. Yep. And um, even when you were on the biotoxin binder, you still had it, right? You know, they've, they've actually, the rashes have come on for the past, like, you know, two, three months. It's actually gotten, it's the rashes seem to be worse ever since being on carnivore, but I believe it's just a detox reaction. And it's only in that's, my calves where the switching is at. Yeah, that's more lymphatic. <clears throat> okay, so let me look at your products here again. Yeah, I, I used to be on lymph active and I didn't have the rashes. So I don't know if I need to start lymph active again. Yeah, when did you stop lymph active? Uh, at last visit when I when okay. we did the muscle testing. Okay, but the rashes appeared before that. But yeah, they've kind of been on and off as I've been detoxing for the past you know few years, but they've been much more prevalent in the past two months. Okay. Yeah, let's go back on lymph active. Okay. All right. And then the dosage, um, two in the morning, two at dinner, or two at breakfast, two okay. at dinner. Wait, one, one thing I, I forgot to mention that I, that I didn't mention is I've noticed since I've been, been doing carnivore, uh, I smell worse than I've ever smelled before. That's uh, I've, my, my armpits smell really bad compared to any time in my life. Yeah, that's and, detox. Okay. Yeah, it, it's what's weird. I'm like, I, I just, I'm kind of getting self conscious because I'm starting to smell worse than ever. And it'll go uh, away. Is there a certain, go away? What's it? So what's it is smell there a certain like? deodorant? You know? just, just bad body odor. Like it's, I, I've never smelled like this before. It just, is it like, is it garlicky or oniony? A little bit. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I guess I haven't really <laughs> analyzed this. Smell. Is it chemically? No, it, is it definitely plastic? isn't. Is it plastic? A, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a little, you know, body odor mixed with burnt plastic. You're getting plastic out. BPA, okay. yeah, styrenes, phthalates, those are coming out. They're coming out through your skin. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Okay, so okay. you're asking about deodorant. Um, we there's a lot of potential there for deodorant. The bottom line is, you got you got to experiment with different products and see what works. So just go to the store and get like four different kinds. And obviously, you always want to try for natural, and you you want to avoid the antiperspirants because it has aluminum in it. Just go with deodorant, right. and then good luck. You know, I hope you find something that works well. Now we carry um, yeah. we carry a couple a couple brands, so you can go in our store and you can look at what we carry, and then otherwise go to a health food store. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, sounds like a plan. All right. Awesome. Well, I I appreciate it, and you'll send me my new updated schedule. Yeah. So I'll call Liz when we hang up here. She'll call you right away and book the next appointment. Send you the schedule. Cool. Okay. Perfect. I really I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, good job. Okay, see ya. Okay, all right, bye. bye.